Hi there, I'm Joel Lima, editor of The Economy. Here with me, I've got Matthew Finney, CTO of Interit. Um, hi, Matthew. Thank you for talking to me. Hey, John. Um, you've recently launched a virtual data center in the Nordics. Yeah. Can you broadly explain what a virtual data center is? So the virtual data center is really, it's part of a platform that Interit has mm. been deploying since about 2012. And really, it's part of what we call our digital enterprise platform. The, the virtual data center itself is the cloud component. It's the bit that allows you to build either hosted private clouds or you know, public clouds, giving you the same kind of flexibility you'd expect from a public cloud. But uniquely with the virtual data center, you have this added advantage. We can, we can use network to create private um, elements. And that, that allows you then to move different types of workloads into the cloud, which mm. you wouldn't normally think you could. Mm. And so it's really, as I said, part of this overall digital transformation strategy, which is really driving, mm. driving the, 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 the future of the company. Mm. And then digital transformation is a very interesting topic. And then we have all these IoT, the workloads will explode yeah. in the next four or five years. Uh, how ready are virtual data centers for the IoT period? And how are they going to fit within the whole IoT ecosystem, the data center IoT ecosystem? I, I, think, I think there's two, there's mm. two, two distinct mm. communities here. Yeah. You mentioned digital transformation. And I mm. think we see two very large sort of movements, if you like, on the digital mm. transformation side. The kind of first one is the folks who have got existing enterprise infrastructure. Mm. And what they're looking to do is they've got to rationalize it. And they've got mm. some quite prosaic issues they've got to overcome, like they've got data center leases they want to get out of. They've got network that probably needs to be renewed. They've got a whole bunch of stuff they need to do. But they have a business that's demanding that they are more responsive from a technology mm. perspective. So one side of digital transformation for the likes of Interu is to allow people to kind of migrate and restructure and reconsolidate the core, mm. which leads to the other side, which is kind of like the, the kind of more forward-looking edge of the digital transformation, mm. which IoT is very much part of. Mm. And in that regard, you're moving to a new model, really, of how you develop code, how you release code. Mm. And there's two very kind of interesting things going on there. One is you're moving to increasing layers of abstraction. So the abstraction we're used, of, used to today with things like cloud we're going to be moving to things like microservices and containers, much more agile infrastructure as a code. And from an IoT perspective, one of the key things, especially from a European context, you've got to deal with the varying fact you've got 28 countries, 33 countries, you know, however you want to count it. You're going to have data residency issues in each country. You've got distribution. Mm -hmm. From an interroot perspective, are we ready? Well, interroot's the largest infrastructure provider in Europe. We are the kind of underlying platform that everybody else has used. Mm -hmm. So from a capacity reserve perspective, mm -hmm. we're, we're very ready for that kind of thing. I think it's really where we see most of the challenges is people really adapting and changing how they're doing things on both sides of that particular mm -hmm. um, divide. Mm -hmm. Now, you actually, you mentioned Europe, so 28 countries. Yeah. Uh, how is Interit working with 28 different legislations and 20 plus different languages? Uh, it's, it's, it's quite challenging. It's, it's always been challenging. Mm. It's always been the idea of Interroot. The mm. idea of Interroot was that mm. um, the original uh, shareholders, the original founders, um, uh, when they funded the idea and when we started the company, the, you know, my background was working in North America in technology mm. companies. Mm. And, North America is a great place to do business because you've got kind of one country, one language, more or less, um, mm. and you've just got a sort of big sort of 300 million people you can sell mm. to. Europe has got, uh, geographically, it, it's inefficient, right? You know, some cities, are, some capital cities mm. are too close and you've got legislation. So the whole idea of Interroot was to say, we're going to present to mm. the citizens, if you like, or the companies of Europe, mm. a platform which is as competitive as if you were building it in North America, mm. because we will take into account the kind of physical issues that go mm. with the fact that the Germans have different data mm. laws, the Swiss have different data laws, the fact that they want data residency in country, mm. the fact that you've got to file taxes in every one of these mm. countries, and all these kind of complications, mm. which frankly, at an interroot level, mm. at a European level, you could argue is, mm. is not particularly efficient. Mm. But that's really been Interroot's um, way of dealing with things. We're inherently compliant to all the varying different EU, mm. EU companies and um, countries, but we present a kind of homogenous, if you mm. like, single kind of plane in which you mm. can expand. Mm. And actually, what you said about America is quite interesting. I'll go back to that in a second. Yeah. But while we're still in Europe, what about Brexit? Well, Brexit is launching yeah. a new. A new <laughs> Whole landscape of challenges. I, 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 have you seen any talk around customers? I, I think I think from an Interroot perspective, mm. Interroot is in mm. 33 countries in Europe, mm. right? So Brexit is sort of at some level. Mm. You know, we have uh, you know big facilities, people mm. in every country. Mm. We can contract in every country. Mm. So from a perspective of how it impacts us mm. uh, at a competitive level, there's there's actually a sort of 
uh, an argument that says, you know, it makes us more competitive, right? Because we're actually, we deal with a, if you like, a dysfunctional market, which is Brexit is, let's make no bones about it. From an intro perspective, we don't like anything that makes it harder to do business, right? And either it's uncertainty or, 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 or tariffing or all these kind of things, it makes it harder. So from our perspective, the flatter and less deregulated, the better. But frankly, from our perspective right now, we have always built and develop services on the belief that Europe will become more efficient, right? Um, unfortunately, in the last few years, we've mm. seen it become, if you like, more nationalistic, which is, uh, mm. has, you know, we're, you know, Interroot can do that, we do do that, that's what we've, we've were set out to yeah. do. Um, but I think for other competitors coming in who are hoping to, for mm. example, use the UK as a base to launch mm. services into Europe, mm. I, can, I can understand, mm. it's a frustration. So what sort of companies do you have from the US and the UK using your services to launch into Europe? Do you um, have any big, big names? Cloud well, the, 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 in terms of the, 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 the sort of big names that, that people will be familiar with, uh, UEFA, you know, mm. Interroot runs 98% mm. of their, their IT services. Mm. We've done a lot of work with the European Space Agency, mm. um, the scientific community in general. Mm. We run big sort of platforms for those guys, mm. everything from Earth observation to, mm. to enabling collaboration between different you know, academic institutions. So from an intro perspective, it's really um, the types of organization we deal with sort of run the gamut from kind of retail to mm. um, consumer, um, mm. more consumer type entertainment mm. uh, and, and obviously the big uh, global industrials. Um, we operate in 132 countries now, mm. Our, mm. but our, our kind of heartland mm. is Europe, of course. But when it comes to your infrastructure as a whole, not just the cloud side, uh, even the network side, do you have any big players? Using well, the, the simple way we yeah. answer this mm. is, is, is to say mm. that Actually, every big player is a customer of Intro. Okay. Um, every so every single, big player, can we assume AWS? You can assume, you can assume that everyone who's mm. looking for hyperscale infrastructure in Europe mm. is using Intro in some way, okay. shape, or form. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, so back to America. You just opened in Miami, Bob. Yeah. My presence of yep. uh, point of presence in Miami. What's the, the landscape in America? Well, the land into account your European business. Yeah, the, the landscape in America mm. is for we have European customers mm. who are global, right? Mm. And so we've. You know, part of the digital mm. enterprise platform is to give our European mm. um, customers the ability to create services which are all the same everywhere mm. um, globally, right? And so we've got, you know, as I said, we're in 132 countries. And what we're doing with the addition of Miami is really increasing the density of service into North America. So we're in New York, Washington, LA and Miami. And Miami also acts as a great gateway for South America because a lot of the traffic comes up from there. In the same way we launched um, the virtual data center into Istanbul, mm. right? That acts as a hub for the Middle East and services coming out from Southwest um, Asia because mm. that's where most of the traffic comes in. Mm. So Interroot's global strategy really is just to increase mm. the, the number of points of presence mm. because we've now got this kind of combined converged mm. um, platform that allows us to mm. sell, you know, networking, computing, storage and communication services mm. globally. Mm. And then from North America to South America, it's quite close. Um, how are you going to service the Latin? So the, the Latin America, the, the, are you going to service Brazil, Argentina, all these countries from North America? Well, we, we do it mm. at, at, a, at a service level. The service, either we go into country mm. and we use um, our in, um, interconnect partners mm. in, in country, so we have services in, in most of the South mm. American countries. Um, or if, if they're coming to interim mm. services, which are hosted services, mm. then those initially will start mm. in, in Miami. Mm. You know, there is an aspiration to see if there's an opportunity mm. to expand that further into actually onto the continent mm. itself. Um, but you know, from an intro perspective, a lot of that is driven by the kind of mm. um, the activities of our customers. And the same with Asia, we have the mm. same sort of uh, okay. approach. Mm. And then looking to 2017, yeah. what sort of trends is Interroot seeing in the industry and how are you gonna shape your business around it? I think there's two really key trends mm. and mm. they're actually quite different and it mm. comes back to the way we sort of characterize mm. enterprise transformation. Mm. Um, the first one, which is really I think cutting right across mm. most of the traditional large enterprises mm. is they're getting out of the infrastructure ownership business. So they're getting out of running their own data centers, really sort of running their own private clouds. And they're looking for someone who can say, look, I've got a, a big bunch of disparate mm. environments from an IT perspective, and I just need someone who can you know, look after them and, and, and create uh, an environment from which I can then build, mm. right? And I can put my resources 
into things that create value in the company. And I think that's another thing that's going on with a lot of organizations. Where is the value you create with technology within your organization? That is the real new function of a CIO or an IT leader. And then that gets to, well, okay, I, my, for example, my value may be in my customer experience and my supply chain. Mm. Then I need to create applications and experiences that really serve that need. And that's moving right to the other end, which is, you know, people looking at um, sort of continuous integration and delivery of applications. And therefore, instead of saying, I'm going to build a data center and this sort of thing, you're talking about mm. things like containers and infrastructure as code and, and the creation of these sort of functional mm. pipelines that allow your developers to constantly mm. create and release code in a very, very agile and responsive mm. way. Okay. And so you've got these two big movements going on mm. within organizations. And typically, within many organizations, you'll find both. Mm. Um, and it's quite interesting because they, mm. they come from very different backgrounds and very different you know, sense of, of, of what, they're, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve. Mm. But one of the key things, if you're looking at, a, say, a a large organization, mm. much of the sort of value and the content of the, the organization may be held on systems which are kind of older, right? And then you've got to work out how all this has got to work together. So that's the, the big trend is, is, is how do I meaningfully get a coherent enterprise mm. transformation strategy mm. working and how can I drive that into 2017 mm. and beyond? Okay. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Thanks for speaking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Daily Congo on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google+. And also visit the website from www.stated-congo.com.